Hi, it's iRacing commentator David Haynes. In 2019, I'm excited to be bringing coverage of the Champ Car Sim Series, the sim racing division of the Champ Car Endurance Series. Contested across 15 championship rounds using the 2015 Mazda MX-5, the winners will receive a free entry into a real Champ Car Endurance Series race in the 2020 season. Each points round will be broadcast live by HJBC. Head to forum.champcar.org for full information and schedule. Sign-ups are open, so get registered now. Best of luck, and I'll see you at the track. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the next round of the RIL iRacing Series Season 27 Round 3. Tonight, we are at Phoenix Raceway in the ProLite 2 trucks. These trucks are uh, a handful uh, to say the least, you are looking at a two-wheel drive vehicle with way too much horsepower, and we're in for a fun night tonight. You have Aaron Thacker. I am here in the booth, and I will be joined by some special guests as we go through this series tonight. We are going to have several heats. This is some classic heat racing uh, here with the Pro Light Series, and qualifying has just now wrapped up, and we are going to get our first group of cars on track here, and I am waiting for a quick refresh on my timing, and I will have some updated uh, laps for you guys. Looks like in our first heat, uh, we are going to have Giovanni Romano, Alex Cofford, and Brian Molitor are going to be uh, in our first heat. So let's watch them as they are gridding right now. Looking for a green flag here, just a few minutes. Very quick gridding uh, here with uh, the Pro Light series. And we're going to watch these guys light it up here. And we got a green lighted. Here we go. We've got Giovanni Mono edging out Alexander Klink in a car number 17. Right behind him is car number 46, and that is Hunter Reeve. They're going into the first corner here. Things are going to be a good tight. Giovanni Mono, Hunter Reeve, Daniel Bartz, everybody very, very tight on the brakes. Looks like, yeah, it looks like Giovanni Mono. Oh, he's going to get bumped by Alexander Klink, who's now going to take the lead. And yeah, he is taking the Joker on that very first lap. Bold strategy by Alexander Klink. So right now, that's going to keep the rest of our... Oh, we've got another taker of the Joker as well. That is Jordan Babcock, Mr. Oval Racing. Jordan Babcock is now taking that Joker as well. Very, very dusty, very loose gravel on the first lap here. But my goodness, Alexander Klink has built himself a very nice lead. He's got himself... Uh, yeah, about a three and a half a second gap here. So just completing our first lap here. Again, these are very, very quick sessions at just four laps. We're looking at just under five minutes of racing. So these guys continue to come through right now. The current settings, Alexander Klink, P1, Jordan Babcock, P2, Giovanni Mono, P3, Hunter Reef, P4, Daniel Bartz, P5, and uh, ben Fawcett in P6. Things are really settled out here. Watching Giovanni Romano again remains in P2. We've got another taker of the Joker. That is Daniel Bartz. He's working his way through. You're watching. It's so difficult getting to that Joker. You're on a little more tarmac than are you on the inside. So you really got to get that end around. But uh, Alexander Klink remains very strong with the battle here between uh, Jordan Babcock and Giovanni Romano. Remains quite Hot, and looking for some lap times. Yeah, we just saw the fastest lap come in uh, by uh, Alexander Klink right there with, oh, excuse me, Giovanni Mano has bested that with a 46.12. So Giovanni Mano, he is feeling quick out there. As Here he goes, he's going for the Joker. This is gonna give him some opportunity to get a very fast run. You do get a lot of more speed here, but you're gonna see how much of a hassle this is. You're going from tarmac to gravel right here and you've got a little more grip uh, not as much dirt on the outside you've been around being very very careful and think back onto the full dirt circuit and yeah he's done it he's gonna eke out uh, a nice little gap here so Giovanni has reclaimed uh excuse me he's taken p1 right now uh, with uh alexander clink p2 jordan babcock in p3 so watch Giovanni taking that corner there alexander clink he's got a bit of work to do with a big slide right there but right now our fastest or our closest battle on track is going to be between Hunter Reeve and Jordan Babcock. Hunter Reeve is hunting down 
Jordan Babcock and Babs Nation. Babs Nation, we usually see him on the oval tracks. Big fans of Babs Nation comes out in big force for those oval tracks, but he also does love the dirt. Jordan Babcock getting a, having a bit of trouble entering this corner here. Hunter Reeve also having trouble. Both cars going extremely slow, trying to get the power down. Both up really struggling here with these rear wheel drive, high power pro light two trucks. So working their way through. And we are now on the last lap. Gina Varnemano has just set fast lap of this session with 46 dead. Followed by Alexander Klink in P2, Jordan Babcock, P3, Hunter Reef, P4, Daniel Bartz, P5, and Ben Fawcett. Whoa, as you watch Babcock really rock it up on two wheels right there. So we're going to ask our producer to quickly go up to our, our leader, Sir Giovanni Romano. He's coming into this final sector here. He's trying to get it to turn. You really watch these guys really trying to get it to turn. He's going to get himself a nice controlled drift. We're seeing a bit of that gravel moving out of the way here. Yeah, it looks like Giovanni Mono is going to take the win in this first heat. Going to be followed by Alexander Klink. And that battle in the back here, if you can see through the dust, they've done it here. So, yeah, that's how we're going to finish out. Giovanni Mono, P1, Alex Klink, P2, Babcock, P3, Hunter B, P4, Daniel Bartz, P5, and Ben Fawcett in P6. Going to take a quick break just before our second heat tonight. But, my goodness, that was fun to watch. All right, we are lining up for uh, heat number two here. We've got Alex Crawford, P1, Thomas Ellison, P2, Zach Price, P3, uh, Sean Hogg, P4, and P5 is Michael Derby, and P6 is going to be Francisco. Oh my goodness, Francisco E. I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna try to butcher your name, sir. But we're excited to have you on track tonight. So these guys are warming up, getting ready to get a green light, and we're off. And yeah, we're watching Thomas Ellison on the outside there. We've got Alex Cofford on the inside. Very defensive line. And car number 20 there. Car number 20 trying to work his way through. Yes, we're getting some pretty bold. Some pretty bold. Oh, wait, we've got a big off to car number 26. Yeah, that is Sean King goes extremely wide. He's really having to hustle this car here. And we're actually car number 29. And now we got Michael Derby who's <laughs> looking to sneak his way through it. But Sean, Sean Hogg just could not get this car to do what he wants to do. I think we're seeing a lot of gravel being thrown up, just all sorts of, of issues here. But let's let's work our way back up to the front here. And uh, Thomas Ellis is still working his way in P2, trying to hunt down Alex Crawford, laying down a bit of rubber here. And it looks like, yeah, Crawford's driving some pretty strong lines. We're watching the line really start to clean up here. So these guys will be going a little bit faster than our previous session. Whoa, big slide there by Thomas Ellison and also for Alex Crawford. So my goodness, these guys are really going for it here. Watching Crawford continue to slide around here. So yeah, current standings, Alex Crawford, P1, Thomas Ellison, P2, Sean King, P3, Zach Price, P4, Michael Derby, and P5. And it looks like, unfortunately, our man, car number 96, uh, Francisco, has uh, retired from this race. So, unfortunate to see that. But we're watching right now. Yeah, Alex Crawford has just set the fast lap of this heat with a 46.1. That is a tenth slower uh, than what we saw Giovanni run the last race. He ran a 46 dead. So, we're a bit spread out here. It looks like right now our closest battle on track is probably going to be between Zach Price and uh, Sean Hogg. So we're watching, uh, yeah, we got some Joker laps coming through here. So let's see who's, uh, yeah, we've got Zach Price taking his Joker right now. He's coming in pretty hot. I'm a little worried he's gonna misjudge that there. Yeah, watching him trying to put the power down here, trying to get that car to turn and then make it behave once you hit that grab up. He's done it, he's done it. So Zach Price has completed his Joker. He is working his way through. We got two laps to go, Thomas Ellison, and Alexander Crawford have yet to take their Joker, so let's keep an eye out on that. I th oh, excuse me, excuse me, they have already taken their Joker, so you're seeing the top two there uh, already set. So right now we're looking for, yeah, uh, Michael Derby and uh, Sean Hogg. Oh, Sean Hogg, he had an issue there. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, 
yeah, he's really had an issue. Michael Derby has made the pass uh, on his Joker lap. So some fine driving there. They got really tight with a little bump by uh, Michael Derby on Sean Hogg to make that pass work. So some very good work. And we are on lap four of five. Let's see right now. Yeah, the battle between uh, P4 and P5. Michael Derby and Sean Hogg is probably our closest battle on track. These two are really going. So let's take a, a look back at our leader here. He is on his last lap. He is coming through right now. This is a very dominant drive by Alexander Crawford. Here he's going very wide on this last jump, really showing off for the fans there. That was uh, it was a pretty dangerous driving there, dare I say, at the end there. But he's uh, he's really looking to give everybody a show here. Watching Thomas Ellison in P2. Just I just don't think he's going to be able to get it done. Watch Zach Price really trying to send it in there, but you're watching these guys. You just can't plant that car. You can't get that nose to stick. So Zach Price working his way around. A big drift for the fans here at the end. So it looks like our field is going to be set. Uh, Alex Crawford, P1. Thomas Ellison, P2. Zach Price, P3. Michael Derby, P4. Sean Hogg, P5. And Francisco in P6. Sean Hogg, really... Uh, flicking all sorts of dirt all over, over the track. They uh, may need to redo where he was taking some of his lines because he was, hey, had that thing floored the entire race. So everybody, that is the conclusion of Heat 2. My goodness, that was a lot going on there. So we're going to take another quick break just before Heat 3. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Thomas Ellison. It is so nice to have you to join me for Heat 3. Thomas, uh, walk me through what it was like driving there. Uh, that was uh, a bit of a bump there at the start by Mr. Crawford, but uh, you guys managed to survive. And Tom, I, I hate to interrupt our conversation here, but we are already off in Heat 3 with Brian Mowester, Andrew Fawcett, Will Gibson, Justin Lemons, John Patrick. Matthew Hall are right on track right now. It looks like uh, yeah, Andrew Fawcett's in P2 right behind Brian Molitor with Matthew Hall. We've already got a Joker taker with Andrew Fawcett. Tom, walk us through what it's like on this first lap with this very green track. Yeah, so the track state is uh, is getting faster every single minute here. As you see Andrew Fawcett taking the Joker lap, he thinks that the track state is going to get faster and faster and faster just by checking the Joker lap on the first lap is the right strategy call. So we have Fawcett in the lead there from... Justin Lamons. Um, these two taking the Joker first lap. We're going to see how that plays out. But uh, of course, setting the pace so far, we saw Brian Molotov there, started on pole, had a little bit of an issue through the final corner there, hitting the wall, that may cost him a few minutes. Yeah, it's going to cost him a few minutes. And right now, I'm watching in the back here, Will Gibson looking to get himself a run oh, on Matthew Hall. Justin Lamons. Justin Lamons around the turn one. He has thrown away that Joker lap, and he is in the wall, in the way at the start. Let's take a look at the replay. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, it's getting a little hot. Yeah, Tom, that's just your classic. Uh, you think you can kiss a, a tire barrier? It doesn't quite work out for you, but Dave, uh, uh, they Tom, are heavier than you think. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, <laughs> and, and Justin Lamb is upside down, upside down now after the jump. He has not had a good lap here. No, uh, no, Tom. I think he, I think he could probably do better uh, on that lap. But uh, what's it get back up to the action? <laughs> Resetting to the pits. That back to the front. Andrew Force is still in the lead. Uh, coming through turn number two here, kissing that tire barrier, but no harm, no fouls. Quick lap, 465, the last lap. Let's see how that compares. We'll get some behind 42.5. He took his joker lap that lap. Ryan Molotov, 49.035. That's pretty slow. Hasn't taken his joker lap there, but let's see what he can do. He's going to take it now. Ryan Molotov through the joker lap. Yeah, and Matthew Hall has completely missed the jump. Uh, Tom, I don't know if that is going to be a penalized issue, but he has completely missed the jump there. And, and Molotov yeah, and in Mol the wall on the Joker lap there. Uh, he, uh, he brushed the wall. That's not going to help this time there. He's through there, but he's still behind Andrew Fawcett here. Andrew Fawcett in the lead now. Yeah, so Tom, we're watching a bit of the controlled chaos as it is. This is it very is, exciting. This is some very Yeah, Tom, I want to quickly touch base on. Yeah, so right now, Andrew Fawcett, he, he's running a 46.5. The fast lap of the night continues to be owned by Giovanni Amato, who did a 46 dead earlier on. So 
I don't know if a temperature is going to affect these guys, but uh, running some very quick times all around. But watching number 94, Andrew Fawcett, continue to take a very strong lead. And Tom, watching some of these guys get a bit off in the uh, the rough stuff. We're watching this corner right here. If you don't get this thing turned early, how hard does it get to car to rotate? It just is like a pig, Aaron. That's what I'm going to say. You brake hard, and then if you don't get the turn absolutely right on the brakes with the weight on the nose, this car will just understeer wide into the wall. It's really tough. So you see how Andrew Fawcett, they're doing a good job through that corner. They've got it sloped out early, early apex, got a car pointed straight, and then you can feed in the power gently to move the rear around. Yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds absolutely dreadful. We're watching, yeah, this battle continue with Andrew Fawcett and Brian Molitor. It looks like it, Molitor, yeah, Molitor has stolen the fast lap away from this race with a 46.45, so he's working his way through. Fawcett, uh, again, showing the crowd uh, he likes to really shift around on the jump there. Yeah, uh, you can see like he's giving up a little bit of pace on the entrance, that final corner there. Giving up a little bit of space, but he's able to get in the nose nice and tight there manage the car on the exit. And that's giving him a bit of an advantage over Molitor as this track ever evolves. So to come across the line here, it's the end of the race, lap five. Andrew Force is going to take the win in that heat from Brian Molitor. Uh, we have Lamont and Hall in the pits and Patrick, therefore, is going to be finishing third. Uh, sorry, Will Gibson third, John Patrick fourth. Wow. Well, Tom, I appreciate you joining us in the booth. That was really fun to hear a nice call from somebody who's been on track. So we are moving our way into heat four. I'm excited for this take... one. Yeah, this is going to be good. See, I'm trying to waiting for uh, scoring and timing to refresh just to see who we've got in this heat. I'm cool. Frank. Uh, Cody Fisher second, Anthony Alvarez third, Shane Cameron fourth, Ryan Verhulst, Maniac fifth, and uh, we're away. Yeah, Tom, you got to be careful. These uh, races get going pretty darn quick. We're watching Nate Franklin take the whole shot on number 31, Shane and Cameron. are watching Great car number eight. Great start from Cameron there for fourth, and he's going for first now. Fourth to first in two corners. That's tremendous driving from Cameron. And he's yeah, going to go for the Joker. Yeah, there you go. So that's going to leave uh, our field here. So Cody Fisher, Nate Franklin, Antonio Alvarez, these guys are all trying to make quick work of this car number 82, Cody Fisher, he's going to be the first one here in the not a joker. Well, that's absolutely the right call from Cameron. He got a great start, he nabbed the lead from Franklin through the first quarter. He took the joker immediately to give himself a bit of a bit of space, a little bit of a break, so he can concentrate putting down fast laps. Absolutely the correct call. Yeah, yeah, Shane Cameron has really put in a stinker of an opening lap. He's got a heck of a, of a lead here. He's got almost a four-second lead over Ryan Overhaul. So watch these guys come through. Nate Franklin really kind of struggled on that first lap. He's got yeah, a Cody Fisher in front of him. He doesn't appear to be as quick, so he looks to be the cork in the bottle on Nate Franklin here. Nate's if I were Nate, I'd take the joke. And I'd go opposite to Fisher here, whatever he does. So you see Fisher takes the joke lap. Nate does not take the jump. Almost running off the edge there. He's going to run his own race there. That's the smart thing to do, is just to run your own race to keep going. And he knows he has Verhulst in front of him. Verhulst is taking his joke lap on lap one. And that's going to give uh, Nate a little bit of a uh, a marker as such to, to to control and manage his race. He knows that if he's right behind Verhulst, he's going to have a little bit of time to take the joker and get past him towards the end of the race. Yeah, you bet. Uh, and we do have a new fast lap of this heat of the 46.5 from Shane Cameron. So running quick, but uh, Tom, we're pretty much dead even on all of our splits here. I think Cody Fisher is going to have his best shot, but he's really laying it out on some of these tarmac sections. That is not going sideways on the tarmac. Tom is not where you're going to gain time here. No, it's not. The dirt is kind of okay because you want to get sideways to try and get the exit to the corner and get the car straight. On the tarmac like there, it's better to be smooth, to be neat and tidy. If you're going sideways, you're losing time and you're just not really maximizing the car there. You see, Nate Franklin taking his joke lap now. He's going to come out right behind Cody Fisher, ahead of Ryan Verhulst and Antonio Alvarez. So Nate Franklin to third place overall behind Fisher and Cameron. Yeah, that was a very, very good joker lap by Nate Franklin. He came in extremely deep on that corner and then almost a a tried to chop off the apex as much as he could. We're watching Antonio Alvarez take a very good line, but Nate Franklin looking very strong. But, Tom, we've just got uh, two laps left in this race. Uh, these guys are coming through right now. Actually, Tom, I think this may be the last lap we're coming up on here. This is lap number four, so we've got one lap to go after this. And we have Chen Cameron in the lead. He lost a little bit of time to Fisher there, but this is all very close. This is very exciting. Who's your money on, Aaron? I don't know. I'm watching Nate Franklin. He's being extremely patient, very, uh, very soft. Very Nate-ish. 
Yes, very native ship. Oh, and he hits oh, a time he the time barrier. Two natish there, and he's going inside there. That's going to be a time penalty for cutting the course. He's going to have to lift out of this, see if he's got a time penalty. It's, it's going to cost him. Now, Tom, it looks like he's going to avoid a time penalty, but yeah, uh, Cody Fisher is taking a very aggressive line into that final corner, so this is the last lap, so this is for all the marbles here. Uh, Tom, looks like our field is going to be set for this one here, so yeah, it looks like, yeah, we're going to take, uh, yeah, Shane Cameron, actually, apologize, Tom, we are not done yet, we have one more corner here, these guys are wrapping around. Yep. And, and Shane they, Cameron in the lead here, Cody Fisher, hanging the tail out, but he's not going to be close enough. It's been a great drive from Shane Cameron, set up from the start. That great start and move to turn one. And uh, kudos there. Winner is Shane Cameron, second place Cody Fisher. Third place Nate Franklin, but remains to see if he has a time penalty or not. I don't think he does. And Antonio Alvarez just taking fourth place from Ryan Verhulst at the line. My goodness. Well, that was pretty wild. To, again, Tom, I think you need to go ahead on track uh, now. Is that correct? Or are you saying uh, we've got things? heat number five coming up yet. It's another heat to go, Aaron. All right, all right. Heat number five, Tom. This, let's one, quickly this one could be the spicy one. I think it could be, too. Let's uh, quickly focus our eyes on the track, because we both know how quickly uh, these <laughs> limits, I'm these ready. Cars, <laughs> these cars practically drop out of the sky, Tom, when they uh, when they hit the track here. So let's, uh, let's grit up here. Tom, these guys are already gritting up. Let's see. We've got uh, car, number, uh, car number 26. I'm trying to look to see who's on grid here. On, on pole, we have Justin Paul, number 164, Dylan Bland, the second place, Adam Albert, David Adam Chicken, David K. Hall, and we have a jump start there. Really? Number 10 of David K. Hall jumped. Justin yep. Hall away for. Yeah, Tom, that was a mess of a start. Car number 33, Alex Albert just never went. And yeah, David Hall with a big jump, so he's guaranteed a drive through penalty. So I, I think his rice is probably done. Alex Albert just never quite got quite going. Maybe he forgot to shift or something happened there. But uh, right now we've got Dylan Blanton, P2, with our leader, Justin Hall, just now taking the first jump. And Justin got a little bit lucky there. He has a, now a nice gap. And he's choosing not to take the drive from first lap, as we've seen in a couple of other races here. Choosing to, you know, maybe uh, leverage that gap there into a little bit more. Run his own race, be smooth, be calm. I'm not sure if that's going to pay off necessarily. You see Blanton there catching a little bit through the final corner. This race is not done. Yeah, no, it's that. Uh, we're watching Alex Albert really hanging it out here. Alex Albert sometimes can get a little bit of the mist, and we're seeing some of that heat right now as he is really flinging this car into some of these corners. So if you want to uh, a show here, watch out for Alex Albert. He is yeah, really we're yanking watch on this it. Battle. We're going to watch this battle for second place between Blanton and Albert. This is going to be uh, all the way to the flag, I think. Let's keep an eye on the gap to the lead, though. I think Blanton is catching, and Albert takes his joke lap. He's going for it. This should put him out right next to Dylan Blanton, I think. Yeah, let's see how he manages this. This is not a place to overdrive it, but oh my goodness, Tom, he's going he's for it. On the limit there onto the dirt in the joke lap section, but he's going to hang it out. He's going to hang it out wide. Can Justin Hall get into the lead here? And it's Albert who's going to take the lead from the joke lap. That's an interesting choice he thought he had a margin he did now he's going to hang it out there and uh if i were the guys behind i would take a joke lap back and see if i can regain the lead yeah let's definitely do that yeah especially for uh, dylan blanton and justin hall because alex albert he's gonna he's feeling pretty spicy feeling pretty quick right now so justin hall needs to uh regain or uh, chop away some of that confidence that alex albert may be feeling right now but he's a big drift on the tarmac there so as we talked about it, it always feels good to do that but that's, Ooh, that was the quickest sideways one. over the crest there just gathering it up on the landing didn't lose too much time that was some good car control there from albert and we're seeing uh hall and blanton actually battling into the final corner here that's going to slow them both down potentially compromise their races and give albert maybe a little bit of a better opportunity they're going to make contact there on the final yeah, yeah, Tom, Justin Hall just took that corner way too wide, got into the, all that extra, that thrown out dirt and that very loose stuff. And you really saw uh, Dylan Blanton take advantage of that unfortunate line. But uh, Tom, these guys are running out of time to take advantage of that joker lap. I think they've got to do it right now. Yeah, Justin Hall there being uh, punished by the fact that Autocross does not teach loose service driving. Uh, he was not prepared for breaking and turning in. He's going to take the joker lap now. All right, Tom. This, is the, this is the race here. Yeah, this is the racer. He's he's got to make this absolutely perfect. Okay, he needs to slow down here, swing it in, good and nice, easy on those throttle. Good keep driving that left. Yeah, keep that left rear planted. He needs a really good rotation here to exit well. Tom, I think he's done it. I think he's done it. That was some nice driving there through the joke lap section from Justin Hall. He kept it nice and tight to the inside, not too aggressive, not too sideways, just neat and tidy and maximizes that.
And Albert there really hanging it out. Um, Blanton's got passed. Yeah, he has a yeah, yeah. He did, yeah. He just really he just really overdrove that final corner time and really had to put the foot down to try and get that car to straighten out. I think he is able to avoid any sort of a course cut. But yeah, he is he is back in a deep third place now. And now Blanton taking the drug lap. This is the final lap of the race. Don't forget. Can we see if Blanton can get the lead here from Hall on the final corner of the race? I don't think he can. I think Hall has got this. Justin making it very, very nice, nice and easy through the final corner. Going to maximize his exit. Blanton's going to be hanging out a little bit on the wide, and he's going to end up in second place. Justin Hall coming across the line to win this heat. Then Blanton will be second. Uh, Alex Alberts very sideways next to the final corner. There, going across the line in third. David Avonchik in uh, fourth. And David Hall, big issue there on the final lap with a uh, penalty. I think uh, David K. Hall can justify fourth, David Andrzej fifth. Wow, well, that was that was some pretty wild driving there. Alex Albert, man, he just, unfortunately, with that issue at the start, I really think he had a chance to win that race, and it just didn't work out for him. So here we go, headed to the C main, C and main. this is 10, 10 minutes, 10 laps down. <laughs> what could go wrong, Aaron? I can't imagine what could possibly go wrong. Let's watch our grid setting up here. So we've got, uh, yeah, we're going to have uh, seven cars in this split. The countdown is nine, running. Nine on the grid. That. Excuse me, nine on the grid. We're watching the countdown right now, but we both know that countdown doesn't mean anything. When these guys are ready, they're ready. Time, here they go. And the top three will be progressing into the feature race from here. We have Jordan Backrock on pole, Will Gibson second, Dylan Blender third. Let's see how they get on. As the revs rise. Tom, I think we got another jump start. Car number 76. We think we have another jump start. He was moving a lot before that green flag. And an awful start there from Jordan Babcock on pole. He's losing uh, five positions off the line. As we see, oh, oh, oh dear, oh dear. No, this isn't going to go well at all into turn one. Everyone's very sideways. Contact, contact, contact. And Babcock is over. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, my God. Tragedy this there is... from Jordan Babcock. He was hit yeah, by the is... in Dylan Blanton. Just no mercy at all off the line. Shoveled him over like a tortoise on its back. And that's a terrible, terrible fate before Jordan Babcock. No, that was not what they wanted. But Tom, we, we got a quad taking the Joker lap right now. I'm trying to work through here. So we got car number 26, Dylan went to car number 28, car number 22, and car number 25 have all taken the Joker. So Tom, taking it early. We've got uh, nine minutes left in this race. Do they know that? I, st I still think it's the right decision, though. I think the Joker lap, lap one, the track's going to get ever faster. You're going to have more. Oh, dear. Contact there into turn one, 18 and 26 car. And uh, it's, oh, and retribution there from the 26. Dylan Blanton there had a little bit of a, little bit of a swing there at Matthew Hall. Yeah, I, I don't think that's some, uh, a bit of a thank you and a no thank you for both of those drivers there. That probably did not feel good. So we've got another car taking the joker lap we've got uh, uh david adam chick is uh taking the joker and who else is coming out right now yeah sean hogg is also just uh, coming, coming right beside car oh, contact contact there between hogg and car number 22 of antonio alvarez both keep it straight but uh hogg is going to lose a position to bats here coming across the line so in the lead we have will gibson in first uh sean Hogg up to second place now Sorry, uh, Daniel Bowser up to second place, uh, Sean Howe third, and David Andrick fourth. Whew, this is exciting. Yeah, Tom, we've got another uh, Joker up there. Who is that taking the Joker? Coming out, uh, Francisco, no, David, uh, yeah, Tom, David, uh, that was um, Francisco, yeah, E, Francisco E, Tom, maybe you can help me with that pronunciation, but he is a bit back in the field, but he has taken his Joker with a very damaged car. Just call me I racing company David Haynes, I already that's all we want. Yes, Francisco Echeverria taking the joke lap there. He's uh, he's having a little bit of trouble here. I think his current damage from that lap on contact, and he's not on the pace at all. Let's get back up to the leader now. Uh, Car number 25, Will Gibson. 45-4 there, the last lap. Tremendous pace here on ever quick track. Yeah, David Hall going very wide there. Car number 20, Sean Hogg. He's looking to take advantage of that. Uh, both of them getting a bit wide. Yeah, he's going to give it to him. That is not a preferred line for Sean Hall. Yeah, he's going to lose that spot. But, Tom, let's go up to this battle between, uh, yeah, P3 and P2, between car number 22, Antonio Alvarez and Daniel Bartz. Just got a little bit of bump. He's going to try and work it to the inside. Antonio Alvarez is on the loose stuff. 
Yeah. That's a great move there from Daniel Bath. He just gave Antonio a bit of love on the entrance to that corner there. Push him a little wide. It's all fair. Robin is racing, as they say in the Americas. But Antonio Alvarez on the inside now, looking to make a move into turn one. And he lifted out, and he hit the hit the tires. Oh, dear. They are heavier than you think. Yeah, they definitely are heavier than you think. We're watching. Uh, yeah, so Antonio Alvarez working his way through there. Daniel Bart's not taking a great line, but I'm trying to think. Yeah, he, there he goes. Two, two very clean eyes. I think they've calmed down just a little bit. Oh, we've... Oh, David. Uh, David. <laughs> About I was going to have a right here. That was Francisco Echeverria into the tire barrier there, and he's taking a toe to the pits, getting out of the way. That was a uh, considerate racing there from Francisco. Yeah, that was a very aggressive hit. And Antonio, Antonio Alvarez into the wall. He's uh, he's still dropping back here from Daniel Bartz. Um, going to be losing a little bit more time as we come across the line. This is lap, finishing lap five, onto lap six now. Five remaining, halfway through the race. And we have commanding lead, five seconds from Gabson to Bartz. And this is all the race here. Let's go back to battle for fourth and fifth. Sean Hogan, Dylan Blanton. Yeah, these guys are really going for it here. And I'm trying to think who's going to... I'm trying to watch who's been taking the better lines. Looks like they're both very strong. I have seen uh, Sean Hogg overdrive just a little bit. Uh, as always, Dylan Blanton, very uh, well behaved on some of this. But, uh, Tom, we are just now halfway through this race. It looks like... Yeah, Dylan Blanton's going to take a way better line. Oh, my goodness. Sean Hogg was way wide in the dirty stuff. Trying to get readjusted. And, uh, yeah, he's going to make the pass. Congratulations on a fantastic pass by Dylan Blanton. To yeah, take what away. happened with, uh, with Hogg there? He came a little too hot to that final corner. But a lot of them soon looking and just punched the throttle. And that washed the car wide, got it loose, got it sideways, and Dylan Blanton was able to take it. But that's me. So I don't know about you, Aaron. It's looking a little dark out there. Uh, what's your What's your feelings? Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, Tom. I've uh, called my fair share of RAR races, but we had one race at a racetrack where it went completely back, and the announcers' booth also went black, and we were literally calling whatever we wanted. And I worry we may be quickly approaching that, Tom. So uh, we're gonna keep an eye on the track as long as we can. But these cars don't have headlights. This stadium doesn't have headlights. And we sure as heck don't have headlamps up here, Tom. So I'm hoping for the best that we can wrap this up before it goes completely black. But it would not be RAL if there were some, not some unexpected uh, weather behavior. Who knows how time works, frankly. Not Devin Peters, that's for sure. And as we, uh, if we look at the uh, the leader now, uh, let's go back up the front, Will Gibson on lap 8 of 10 now. Uh, he is a commanding lead of 4 seconds over Daniel Bartz and Antonio Alvarez. Remember the top 3 here go through the feature. This is the last chance to qualify for the feature race. And we have uh, Alvarez and Blanton about a second between them. Uh, this could be the battle for the final position, and Blanton is now right behind Alvarez. Let's keep an eye on this. Yeah, I'm watching here, but right now, Dylan Blanton, he has turned the fastest lap of the night on that previous lap with the 44-9, the but that doesn't uh, mean he's able to escape Dylan Blanton, or excuse me, uh, he's trying to catch up to Antonio Alvarez, so that fast lap needs to pull another one of those in order to make this warp. We are on lap 9 of 10, but right now, Will Gibson has got a very comfortable lead. Yeah, and the battle here really for third place between Alvarez and Blanton. This is the battle for the for qualifying to the uh, to main, and Blanton is not going to be giving this up easily. He wants this position from Alvarez. Comes to the final corner there, Blanton taking a tighter line through the left-hander, slowing it down to the right. He's going to be careful of that tie barrier, and he's so tempted there to make contact with the bumper of Alvarez. Yeah, that was super close, and he's, he's just trying to get through, but I just don't think he can do it. So Dylan Blanton, he's working super hard. Yeah, he, he came hard. out of the throttle there on the, on the exit of the corner because he would have made contact with Alvarez's rear bumper if he did not. It's considerate racing there from Blanton, but I think it may have cost him the chance at uh, start of the future race here. Yeah, I think it may have done too. Tom, I, I don't. I don't want to mention it again, but it is starting to get very dark. It is getting dark, isn't it? <laughs> no. It I think really like pretty... things are uh, uh, notorious for not being accurate um, with respect to timing. Um, so it may be getting a little dark here for the feature, and that will be just what we have to deal with, frankly. Yeah, we're watching Will Gibson come across right now. So, Tom, yeah, we are working through our final uh, placements here. Yeah, so Will Gibson, P1, Daniel Bartz, P2, Antonio Alvarez, P3, Dylan Blanton, P4, Sean Hogg, P5. Uh, Matthew Hall, P6, uh, David Adamczyk, P7, and Francisco E. and Babcock, P8, and P9. 
Yep, so uh, Gibson, Bartz, and Alvarez there go through to the feature, the dark feature, as it will be, as we think it will be. Uh, so let's uh, get ready for the B main now. Ten cars on the grid. Um, Michael Derby on pole. Nate Franklin second, Hunter Reeve third, John Patrick fourth, David K. Hall fifth. Then you have Zach Price for Hulse, Ben Fawcett, Justin Lammons, and Jordan Beck fourth, rounding out your top ten. Yeah, Tom, we really don't know what to expect at this point, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready. It's getting a I'm bit ready. dark, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it's getting a bit dark. I don't know if these guys have a have a torch uh, back in the pits to uh, tape to the front of their hood, but they may need it by the end of this race, Tom. This is, I mean, if you have the light boost on your monitors, bump it up now. And as we get ready for the start, Michael Derby on pole. Let's see how we get away. And we have a huge jump start from 046 there. Hunter Reeve there with a massive jump start, and he's gone for it. He had to go for it. He's going to get a big penalty at the end of the race, but we're going to see how that plays out. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how that's going to play out, to be honest, but yeah, let's see what's going on to be a Hunter Reeve, P1, Daniel, uh, Michael the P2, oh, Nate Franklin has made a pass here, so Nate Franklin, P2, Michael the P3. Tom, this is going to be a pretty aggressive display of driving right now. And we only have, oh dear, and uh, Michael Derby there into the wall over the jump, lost a bit of time, lost a bit of position there. And this is not looking good for him so far. No, it is not looking good for him so far, but Tom, I don't know really what anything is looking like at all because I am uh, borderline losing vision right now. Car number 29 getting very, very loose with a little bit of Michael Derby. It did, probably didn't appreciate that from car number 13, John Patrick. But uh, Tom, it's, uh, it's uh, the sun is setting quickly. Yeah, this is uh, tough to see what's going on, frankly. <laughs> oh, I've just seen car number 13 is taking a huge bump. John Patrick there into the wall. I'm not sure if he could see or not see. Um... I'm sure that uh, the field here will not be um, happy necessarily with the fact that this race has gone on longer than anticipated, but there is some still light in the air. I don't know about you. If I spectate from the cockpit view, I can see just fine, frankly. Um, now it's going to get a little bit darker. It's maybe going to be a bit of a challenge, but frankly, if you didn't beat the pre-race, then uh, that's on you. Yeah, uh, Tom, I, I was going to say just follow the brake lights in front of you, but uh, these cars don't have brake lights either. So right now I'm just looking for some battles on track of what I think I can see. And it looks like uh, Michael Derby and Justin Lamont appear to be a close battle going on right now, separated by just by half a second. Looks like... Yeah, uh, yeah, that's our closest battle on track. So, Tom, if you can see anything, uh, I think we'll just continue to watch this one. Well, I can't see much, Aaron, <laughs> if I'm honest. Uh, but I'm, I'm on board now with Michael Derby. He's battling here with car number seven. That's Justin Lamons, uh, fourth and fifth positions. And, you know, I'm on board here. I can see just fine. There's a bit of dirt being thrown up, but that's to be expected on a dirt rally cross course. Coming here through turn one, absolutely flat. And he took a little bit of lift there. Lamons took a lift to the inside. Derby going to the outside, breaking later. Lamons covering the inside. No way to pass that for Derby at all. Yeah, some very nice driving there by Justin Lamons holding off Michael Derby. I'm trying to see who all has taken a joker here. I imagine uh, several jokers have been taken already. Michael Derby with the big jump. Oh, very nice line by Michael Derby. Oh, this is not the preferred line for here. We have nice crossover by Michael Derby. He's going to make it stick. Justin Lamont's going to be defensive. Watch out. We have two cars exiting the Joker as well. Oh! On oh, contact there, Derby getting uh, hooked around there. And that's uh, some brave driving from David K. Hall on Michael Derby out of the Joker lap. This is really a uh, very, very tight battle here. Let's uh, check it up front here with our leader, Hunter Reeve, car 046. He seems to have a little bit of a gap to uh, Nate Franklin and... But he had a jump start, if you remember, and really it's not helped him at all. Um, he's only about two and a half seconds behind, uh, ahead of Nate Franklin, and so we expect him to take a penalty at the end of the race. Oh, we just had an issue with uh, Justin Lamons and John Patrick. Justin Lamons smacked the tire barrier, and John Patrick was the non-beneficiary of that. He has done a nice donut uh, to recorrect the car, but Tom, he has lost himself a whole boatload of time. Yeah, it's uh, maybe the visibility is having an impact here. Uh, I don't know. I 
can see just fine, but uh, some of these few guys might be a little bit vision impaired, and uh, with the red mist clouding the helmet, I'm not sure what they can see. Yeah, I, I can. Uh, what I can tell you right now is I would not want to be a mod in this league because there's going to be some pretty angry people uh, ex exiting yeah, this session. <laughs> Awful moderation here. Um, I just feel sorry for the poor mod team. Um, that we're taking a lot of flack here from people who think that it shouldn't have gotten dark. And maybe it shouldn't, maybe it should. Who's to say? Who's to say, Tom? We are definitely not ones to say. I'm watching Justin Lamons, uh, David Hall, and Michael Durbin. This continues to be our somewhat closest battle on track. I uh, have the uh, camera as elevated as possible to try and absorb as many light particles into the lens as possible to make some sort of semblance of what's going on. Justin Lamons looking to take a line on David Hall. No, David Hall taking a very unique line into that there. Looks like it appears to be quicker as well. So, Tom, we're running out of time here, along with running out of light. I don't know if any of our viewers can actually see anything on track, but we are on lap 7 of 10 with Hunter Reeve with that 5-second penalty. He's still up there with the 2.5-second lead, and that is not going to cut with that time penalty. I, I don't know ultimately what time penalty he will take, because uh, I think it's dependent upon how much time he gained off the start, how much time he may lose through the pit lane. Um, so... I'm intrigued now as to whether Michael Derby will or will not have a chance to make it into third place and get into the feature, the very, very, very dark feature that we're about to have. Yeah, and Tom, Zach Price is in the pits. Uh, this may be a serving of a penalty pass of 15 seconds. So Zach Price, he was running quite well in this race. He is now sitting standing still in pit lane. And he's not going to win any prizes with that strategy, I'm afraid. Uh, out on track, though, we have Michael Derby coming up behind David K. Hall. Uh, I think Hall took the uh, Joker last prior lap, but Derby's going to get past on the inside, and there's contact. And uh, David Hall missing the front bonnet of his car there, uh, looking very Mad Max-esque, as much as I can see him anyway. Um, so as we come across the line here, it's now getting very dark, Aaron. Yes, it is getting very dark, but I do want to report we have a new fast lap of the night uh, by Nate Franklin with a 44-6. So Nate Franklin working very hard to try and catch back up to Hunter Reeve, and he well, is doing Nate all Franklin the right there thing. Has been eating his carrots late at night. He's got the vitamin B, and his eyesight have been tremendously aided. And this is really, you know, a unique chance. Not many other leagues would do this, for better or for worse. Yeah, Tom, it's almost like you would say this is a premier league to take these kind of risks. But uh, Nate Franklin is taking full advantage of these moderation risks right now as he has closed that gap to 1.5 seconds with that uh, potential time penalty of Hunter Reeve. That would put Nate Franklin in a post-race uh, P1. Yeah, and I think uh, I think Nate Franklin here, the mod, being aided by the mod rules of the session setup. No controversy there, of course. Um, but we're missing to see how much of a penalty Hunter Reeve is going to take. Justin Der uh, Hunter Reeve in first. Michael Derby in third place. 15 seconds behind Hunter Reeve. Now, I don't know what sort of penalty Hunter's going to get, but uh, Derby will be secure in third place regardless. He'll be going through to the very, very, very dark feature race. This is coming up shortly. Uh, this is lap 10. This is the final lap. So we're going to see Hunter Reeve crossing the line to win the uh, B main and come on to the feature race. Tom, I don't think anybody can be any more excited for this feature race because they are racing each other and also racing the sunset. Tom, I am thrilled for this next session. Well, we're out here in, uh, in Phoenix, and uh, this is the Western ideal of racing sons at home before the Cowboys and Indians start fighting. So I'm going to run down to my car, get my uh, race suit on, and I bid you adieu, Aaron. Thank you for having me in the booth for this time, and I'll see you after the race. An absolute pleasure having a competitor up here in the booth, Thomas Ellison. As Tom mentioned, we are in for a... Uh, pretty special moment here we just finished up the b main which is a 10 minute race the teams now have a excuse me, the drivers now have a three minute warm-up followed by a 15 minute feature and uh i honestly don't know how much of this race uh viewers will actually be able to see because when this warm-up finishes uh it will probably be pitch black and that's will be the end of that so we will do our best up here in the booth i'm going to take a quick break and let you guys watch this warm-up session and we'll be back in just a moment
All right, everyone, welcome back. We are here for the final race. This is for all the marbles tonight. We are gridding up right now. And everyone, as I mentioned at the start of this, we are going to do our darndest in order to uh, announce this race. Uh, we are going to do our best with the cameras. We're going to do our best with calling the race. I will likely be calling the entire race from my timing screen. So everyone, we appreciate you sticking with us. Uh, the sun has set here at uh, Phoenix Raceway, and it is very dark out here. These cars have no lights. The track has no lights. The only thing we're going to see is that green light drop here in about 20 seconds. And so we've got ourselves 16 cars uh, in this session, along with our fellow uh, part-time commentator, Thomas Ellison, who appears to be gritting in the P7 uh, spot here tonight. So as I said, 16 cars. This is for all the marbles. This is the main feature. And we've got lights, and we are getting ready to go. We are red lights, and we're about to hit green. With the reds come up, and we are green. Here we go in the final feature of the RAL iRacing Series. 16 cars headed towards turn one. What could go wrong? Oh, there's a big, we have got a car upside down. We're gonna do our best to see who that is. It looks like that could be, no, that's not Daniel Bartz. I'm looking through my Tommy screen to center when we're trying to figure out who that was, but that was a very big moment for, for one of those cars. Oh, and, oh, unfortunately that is Nate Franklin who had such a very impressive drive last time around. We are working our way through the field here. Lots of it shifting and diving. I believe someone's probably taken I believe we've got uh, several joker laps that have been taken here, and we're trying to figure out who's... Yeah, we've got Alex Albert out front, uh, uh, Brian Molitor, P2, Alex Crawford, P3, Alexander Click, P4, Giovanni Romano, P5, Alex, or Andrew Fawcett, P6, Justin Hall, P7, Hunter Reeve, P7, Cody Fisher, P9, and Will Gibson, P10. I'm pretty sure I missed somebody in there on that naming, but my goodness, things are tight right now. On track, we are going to work our ways between uh, Brian Malter and Alex Albert. This P1 and P2 battles, we watch Brian Malter go very wide into this very tight hairpin. Can he get it rotated? We've got another Joker going through right now. We are asking. Yeah, it looks like we got Giovanni Romano taking that as well, but uh, Brian Malter still trying to hunt down Alex Albert, who is very quick right now, very squirrely out of that final section. So, yeah, we got Giovanni Mano hunting down Brian Molitor as well. We're gonna keep our eye on this on this front battle here as we're watching Brian Molitor really looking to hunt down, but Giovanni Mano is also right on the bumper of Molitor. So this top group here is very, very competitive. And I don't know how any of these guys can see anything, but I'm riding along in the cockpit to do my darnest to make sure, oh, there's a backfire. That's a, we saw some backfires in some of these cars. We get the rest of these cars backfiring, get some more light on the, the track. Yeah, look. Yeah, we've got all sorts of battles going on. But oh, Giovanni Mano tries to dive in on Brian Mullich. He can't quite get the jump. He's going to get a very nice run in this section. Not really any sort of draft to speak of here, but this is uh, where you kind of want to use your horn, that the big old metal horn on the front there. Alex Howard goes very wide. In that section, I think Brian Mulder is going to have a very good run in this very slippery section on the tarmac here. Be careful on this jump. We've seen Alex Albert make an issue before. Oh, Brian Molitor gets very twitchy just before the jump. Manages to work his way through. G. Bonamano being very patient behind this group. Let's work our way. Yeah, we're going to quickly work our way back to... No, excuse me. Yeah, we're uh, trying to figure out my timing here. Yeah, I apologize. My timing is playing uh, playing tricks on me. So we're going to go back up to G. Fine Hermano and Brian Molito. I thought I saw some uh, spicy action in the back there, but uh, my timing uh, is also having troubles uh, seeing in the dark as well. But right now, the gap between Alex Albert, G. Fine Hermano, and Brian Molito, it is a second and a half between these three guys, and they are really, really going for it. We are uh, now on lap five of 15 in this race. Looks like Alex Albert is approaching some lap traffic. This is not going to be good for him. I'm trying to see that maybe 
Oh, we got some contact. We got some kind of Brian Malter, Giovanni Romano have made contact. G Brian Malter gotten in a little bit deep. Give it a tap. We got a rolled car. We have a rolled car. The P2 and P3 having to split that rolled car. My goodness, that was chaotic. Oh, then, oh no, that was Michael Derby who rolled. And then Brian Malter is just a tire lap. So this is, lap six has been absolutely chaotic. So right now, unfortunately, Daniel Bart's out of the race. Michael Derby out of the race. And Nate Franklin is back on track after that roll at the very start for him. But man, this is really shaking things up here. Let's go to the battle between uh, Alexander Klink and Andrew Fawcett. These guys are very, very close. Alexander Klink looking to take the inside line on Fawcett. Oh, and a nice little bump there. <laughs> Looks like Fawcett hit the brakes a little sooner than what Klink was expecting. The side by side with the jump. And yeah, Klink's going to miss the jump entirely. I think that will be a time penalty. Oh, oh, and he hits the two huge contact there and he manages to keep it going so wow this has been a massive shift so not only did clink have to take a time penalty but he did a big old 360 spun around and lost a whole boatload of spots right there so this whole group here it is now alexander clink cody fisher justin hall and andrew fawcett it went from a two car battle to a four car battle uh, within about oh and then clink again his entire having to slow down cody fisher i believe is yeah, Cody Fisher's car is off. Cody Fisher's car is off. I do not know what has happened, but Cody Fisher has completely left this race. Yeah, he is parked, so Cody Fisher's run into an issue, and Alexander Klink, with some very quick hands, has now... Yeah, yeah, he's working his way back, so right now we're going to go back. So right now we've got Coffert out of the race, Derby out of the race, Thomas Ellison out of the race, Will Gibson, Daniel Bartz all out of the race. Our closest battle on track. Is likely, yeah, it's going to be a battle between Andrew Fawcett and Justin Hall. Justin Hall in this battle has resumed after after both of those cars uh, really uh, uh, had a, a, a two split there with uh, Cody and Derby working their way through, but then both those cars had an issue. So, Hall, Fawcett, whew, I'm working to catch my breath here as we are just uh, just almost halfway through this race. Yeah, we are halfway through this race. Wow, you can really see those brake, brake discs light up in this absolutely pitch black scenario. And I wish we had some better timing on who is taking the Jokers here, but I'm sure we've had many, many takers so far in this session. And I'm gonna ask our per I'm gonna ask our producer yet yeah, to go back up to the front. And uh, yeah, it looks like Alex Albert is having some contesting moves by Giovanni Mano. He's on the outside. This is not how you want to make this pass. Alex Albert with a big old slide, and it looks like, yeah, he's going to let it keep. So Gigi Vandermato had to back off just a little bit. Oh, there's a car spun in front of them. Man, they just avoided that. I barely saw that. I don't know how in the world they saw that. So Gigi Vandermato, Alex Albert having to dodge the track, figure out where the track is, and also just somehow avoiding cars that have spun on track. So Gigi Vandermato, things have calmed down a little bit. Oh, Alex Albert goes very wide and smacks. Oh, that's a very, very hard hit on the wall. Gigi Vandermato is going to likely get some time on this. These cars are very tough, and I wonder if Alex Albert took some damage with that very big hit that he has taken uh, into that turn one section. So, again, a quick rundown of our of our current scoring. Alex Albert, P1, uh, B, Giovanni Mano, P2, Brian Molitor, P3, Andrew Fossett, P2, Alexander Klink, P5, Justin Hall, P6, Antonio Alvarez, P7, and the rest of our group is pretty much out of contention. Shane Cameron is three laps down. Nate Franklin is eight laps down. Hunter Reeve is five laps down. They are on track, but right now it is the top six that are going to be running this race, and I'm going to ask our producer to move down to the battle between Andrew Fawcett and Clink as we are back at it again. You watch those glowing disc brakes from Andrew Fawcett and Alexander Clink as they slam on these. Oh, Clink again has hit a tire, and he's rolled it. Alexander Clink has rolled his car. He very likely could not see that tire barrier and I worry that Clink is likely done for this race. Ah, oh, that's tough to see or not see, depending on what you can on your screen. Let's go back up to a battle between P1 and P2. Giovanni Romano is really trying to work some magic here on Alex Everett, who's been extremely strong. And these guys right now, I, I have to say, they are probably completely guessing on where some of those tire barriers are, because I just don't think they can see any of them. I think they probably have a rough idea of where they are. Yeah, this is absolutely unbelievable what these guys are running right now. Giovanni Mon on that last lap did a 
dead. That is some pretty big pace. And right now they're side by side, door to door, door banging. Giovanni Romano, the timing is still showing him. And oh, he's now taking he's taking P1 now. So Giovanni Romano, oh, sound like he missed a shift there. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep it. He's showing up two tenths. Yeah, I think he's done it. Uh, Giovanni Romano has made the pass, but Alex Albert diving in big. Oh, massive slide by Alex Albert. Yeah, but Giovanni Romano is going to make it stick. He has made the pass with just three laps of L. There's another car on the side of the road. My goodness, but Alex Albert, he is not going to rest. He is on Giovanni Romano's bumper. Watch out for contact on the jump. Oh, that was close. It's coming in again. Oh, slight little bump there by Alex Albert, giving Antonio Alvarez a tap in the left rear. Alex Albert again overshoots this corner. He's got to get that straightened out. Looks like he's going to be able to. Yeah, he's going to big slide there. Yeah, you, my goodness, this is so scary. I haven't seen some of these tire barriers a bit misplaced on the track. I don't know how these guys are seeing any of these. But yeah, we have two laps to go. Uh, Giovanni Mano and Alex Albert, this is going to be your absolute battle for the win here. Alex Albert coming in a little aggressive. He's got to be careful with that. This section right here, we see. Oh, Antonio Alvarez, or Chibi, Giovanni Mano just smacked a tire barrier. He, he probably could not see it. He's managed to work his way through and not cause any issues. Hope he didn't damage his car. <coughs> Alex Albert with a really big slide right there. Big slide. He's working his way through. Alex has got to be careful. He's overdriven this a few times. And we're hearing some pretty high revs from Alex. Antonio Alvarez, excuse me, Giovanni Romano, he's gapped it to a second and a half now. Alex Albert does not need this. He needs to regain some composure, put down some very good laps. We have two laps to go, two laps to go in this final feature of uh, season 27, round three here at Phoenix with the Pro 2 light trucks. And they are running into some lap traffic as they work their way through. Oh, there's a tire barrier in the middle of the road. Alex Albert is really giving Giovanni Romano the old metal horn there working through some of that lap traffic. I'm not quite sure who that was. It could be just a small group of cars. They are working their way through. This is a final. Oh, Alex Albert with a big hit on Giovanni right there. I'm sure Giovanni did appreciate that. Alex Albert showing some respect, backing off just a little bit. These guys have got to be careful with these inside tire bears. Alex Albert with a big drift, a little bit of overdrive there. He's got to get this straightened out. Oh, big work away, Alex Albert. Okay, this is the last lap right here. Watch out for this lap traffic. I hope Alex Albert can see that car. I think he did. Alex Albert, this is the corner where he's really had too much aggression. I think he may have, I think he may be okay. Watch out for these tire bears. That's the one that's the scary when you can't quite see that one. Wow, Giovanni Mano has pulled a half a second on this final lap here. Alex Albert really, really working hard to get through this big drift. Okay, is, who's gonna avoid the tire barriers? Who's not gonna hit him? Alex Albert, oh, he overshoots the hairpin again. I worried that may have sealed the deal. Giovanni Romano very likely has been able to complete this here with a fantastic drive. Giovanni Romano takes P1, Alex Albert with a valiant P2, Brian Molitor in P3. My goodness, was that exciting. Alex Albert, you know he's got to be frustrated. Oh, and a little bit of extracurricular activities at the end there. Wow, my throat hurts a lot. Uh, I don't know what I'm screaming about because I can't see anything, but what a finish. I am now going to do my best to try and find anybody that is down in the paddock after this race. But yeah, it's uh, tonight our winners of this are going to be Giovanni Romano in P1, Alex Albert P2, and Brian Molitor in P3. What a night. I, and I hope you guys could see something. Because I definitely couldn't. So I'm going to do my best to grab some drivers. And see who I can get in the booth. I have managed to find our race winner. I just screamed into the paddock. Somebody responded to the name, and then they came out in the booth. I don't know if this is actually who I need, but I believe I have our P1 driver tonight, Giovanni Romano. Is this Giovanni Romano? Because I can't see. Uh, Yeah, yeah, it's me here. 
Uh, just listen to my voice. You can uh, find me. <laughs> Giovanni, uh, congratulations on a fantastic drive tonight. I, I don't think I need to any way need you to articulate how difficult it was to drive in this final session, but uh, explain early on what some of these uh, uh, sessions were like, what the track felt like, and how the, how the truck felt. Well, it's pretty interesting as uh, on a green track, the track, the truck is uh, very understeery and it takes a lot of effort to turn it. So on my first heat, it was a brand brand new green track and it was a by very touch and go through some of the corners uh, trying to get the truck to turn. But uh, as the track, uh, as the dirt sort of gets cleared off and you probably saw that in the later heats, the truck really picks up speed and it can turn a lot easier and that, uh, uh, makes it interesting because you have to drive the truck very differently depending on the track conditions. Yeah, walk us through the uh, the hairpin. It looks like once you guys got that uh, the track cleared out on the hairpin, it was a little easier to drive. But we watched a few drivers get inside that loose stuff on that hairpin, and it was almost impossible to get out of there. Yeah, you just have to take it really, really slow on the entry because uh, the truck just does not like the turn. It won't grip up until you basically almost stop. And... Uh, Get it down to first to uh, help uh, get the rear kicked out, and then once the rear's kicked out, you can help uh, the truck turn a little using the throttle. Well, Giovanni, as always, sir, we really appreciated uh, uh, you joining us tonight, and congratulations on a fantastic win. Any thanks or shouts before you be very careful leaving the booth tonight? Uh, yeah, I'll make sure to have uh, all my, my full lighting system on in my vehicle. Uh, thanks to uh, you for the broadcast. Uh, as usual, it's appreciated. And uh, thanks to the admins for hosting everything, uh, despite the fact that we occasionally make, make mistakes. It, I appreciate that uh, they put all this effort in for, for, for free, basically. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Giovanni Romano. On to our P2 driver tonight. Alex Albert, uh, I, I, I do want you to talk quickly about some of the driving conditions, because my goodness, was that some extremely close racing at the end there. How are you guys able to keep it so tight with basically no visibility? Uh, yeah, thanks uh, for having me on again. And yeah, it was tough out there um, running with Geo. Um, it just helped all the practice that we had and uh, memorizing the layout of the track because you definitely couldn't see it out there. There was uh, occasionally you could see some shadows and differentiate where the tire bales were. And that's what I was trying to focus on was the darkness of the tire bales and not hitting them. So, yeah, it was really tough uh, after pretty much right, right from the drop of the feature. Alex, can you talk us through the the grip levels of the uh, Joker section and the non-Joker section? I, it looks like the Joker section, and it's all tarmac a bit dusty. How much did you have outside in that Joker section? Yeah, so the Joker had a lot of grip. I felt like um, I had to slow down a bit to get the truck. Um, it's a bit of a left and then a right. And uh, once you once you get the, there set into the right, um, like you mentioned, there, it's more just dusty than really dirt covered. So uh, lots of grip from the asphalt underneath and uh, really easy to uh, lay down the power. The hardest part is coming out of there at the right angle because there's a tire bail that uh, makes it kind of a tight fit, but uh, I was able to make it work. Well, Alex, as always, we really uh, love watching you drive out there. You uh, put in some really hard laughs, even overdriving a little bit, giving us a show up here in the booth and definitely for the fans. Uh, probably not where you wanted to end up tonight, Alex, but currently uh, P1 of the points this is definitely going to help you out. Uh, so any thanks or shout out for you. Again, be very careful leaving the booth tonight. Uh, no, just thanks to you guys for uh, putting on the effort and to broadcast these races. I know it's a lot of work, and we all appreciate what you do. So thanks again. Thank you, Alex. And now I believe I have our P3 driver, Brian Molitor. Brian, you worked your way up uh, tonight with some very tough driving. We talked about some track conditions. Uh, what was it like in this final session for you? Yeah, I just had to uh, find as much light as I could and then uh, stay out of the tire bales, and that was about it. Uh, I think everyone else took care of themselves uh, crashing into each other. So staying clean, staying clean was the main thing. Yeah, if you could quickly talk us through that start there. We uh, saw a car go up on its lid. I believe that was Nate Franken. What happened at the start there? Just uh, too many cars going into one spot? 
Yeah, the first turn bottlenecks, and uh, there's a lot of jockeying for position going on. I, I couldn't tell you what happened. You're, uh, if you saw it, that's, uh, that's more than I did. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, we we uh, just had a limited visibility up here. We saw, yeah, just like you said, lots of cars going into a very small space. The next thing we saw was a car going upside down. So, Brian, congratulations on your drive tonight. Uh, checking on the points again. This was a points gather for you, but you're kind of uh, mid pack on that. So, fantastic drive tonight, man. Great job on the P3. Any thanks or shout outs before you head out of the booth? Sure, of course. Uh... Thanks to you guys for doing the broadcast. Uh, thanks to the admins. Thanks to mom and dad. Good old mom and dad. Brian, you enjoy the rest of your evening, sir. Be careful 